Alesh will tell us all about the evolution of KDE's apps ecosystem. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. So as promised, uh, is, is this working? Am I wearing the microphone wrong? Okay. okay. Um, as promised, I'm going to make fun of my title by putting an emoji on it because it's the most keywordy and long title I've ever seen, at least on one of my presentations. Also, it's kind of wrong. This happens because they ask you to do the academy presentation somewhere in February or something when you're thinking about something else in life. It was cold back then, and it was, I was living in another country and everything. Um, but the point is that I'm not going to talk that much about apps. I'm going to talk about uh, deployment strategies, though. And apps are part, uh, part of it, but not entirely the whole thing. But yeah, my big fat title is wrong and um, understandable, so I'm sorry about that. I'm sure that's why everyone else is on the other room listening to something much more interesting anyway. In any case, uh, before I delve into it, for those of you who don't know me, that's my name, that's my email if you want to uh, shout at me uh, virtually. If you want to shout at me not virtually, here I am. Um, I've been a KD contributor for quite a while now. I've been working on uh, several both apps and, uh, well, in Plasma and uh, well, many of our upstream projects. Uh, uh, since May, I'm working for a car company called Emission, doing um, well, car things, I guess. Uh, you might find it interesting because I'm doing KD-related things on the car, so that's kind of fun, at least for me and I guess for you too. Uh, if you were around yesterday, you will have seen me talking about board things because I am the KDV president. I have been for the last few years and I'm running again, so if you're a KDV member, vote for me. You don't have an alternative, but still, vote for me. And like I was saying, I, uh, I, I, I recently moved. I am from Barcelona, was living in Barcelona, but I'm living in Berlin as of uh, recently. Now, what I wanted to talk today about and that's what kind of had in mind when I was uh, while well, creating that very weird and odd title is uh, how do we create thriving KD products? Uh, as KD, we've been creating like things, things forever. Um, and I think that we all can agree that we have uh, somehow failed at like delivering the whole thing, right? Uh, software is a very complex topic. And one of the big topics uh, of why is it so hard is because we're depending on so many things. You have all of the electronics, you have uh, well, big hardware manufacturers that get the things that run our stuff. Uh, we've had the distros in the middle as well, where like they kind of orchestrated everything. And then we were there. We were there um, while well, doing our best at providing something that, that could be useful for our users. A uh, big part of why we've been doing this is also like it informs what we've put up with all of this complexity. We, we, create, we, we believe in creating an operating system that is good for our users, that is uh, useful for, for people. Uh, but uh, well, have we been able to provide uh, our users with all the freedom we wanted? Um, well, the first point is that if you don't get to the users, the users don't get to enjoy that freedom. You can always say, yeah, sure. They could have like installed Debian on their computer that came with Windows and then they would have been freed from the heckles of society, but that's kind of a long shot. Um, in any case, um, if I think about a pro uh, product, what do I think about? Well, first of all, it needs to be useful, right? Like, and all, most of our <laughs> products, or if not all of them, are, are really useful. They, they cover a very clear use case. Uh, but also, they need to be like safe and resilient in that like this is something that you need to be able to embrace and rely on. Like you're not gonna be writing uh, well your letter to the loved one if you don't believe that if you believe that it's gonna explode or that it's gonna leak somewhere or whatever. But also from our uh, well, software creator perspective, it needs to like uh, be easy to fix. Like somebody needs to be able to come and say. Uh, there is this problem, and we all know that every software has problems. They need to be able to address it, to add new features, to add new whatever that needs adding, and well, ship that to the other users that uh, we're, um, we're going to be getting. But it also needs to be able to uh, be uh, collaboratable, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's much, much easier to create a project where it's just you working uh, there. Uh, as soon as we start like saying let's create it as a group as a as a, as a small society uh, well problems increase obviously this is not our problem uh, luckily this is a problem for every software developer around the world and there's plenty of people who have 
uh, well, address that. We use Git, for example, nowadays, and it wasn't even our idea. Um, but uh, I think that it's, it's useful to reflect on why that's important, because uh, when, we, when we think about how others create products, we, uh, it can be tempting to say, let's uh, embrace the, their limitations because they can be freeing. But I think that if we like, forget about any of these four uh, bottom lines, um, well, we are kind of lost. This doesn't mean that these are the only ingredients that uh, can be there, much like a lot of the recipes in the world, you can uh, tweak them to your liking. But I think that these are very, four very important pillars. Um, and I want to contrast uh, the four of these with a little bit our, our history, our, our context, uh, to be able to, uh, well, to be able to explain why I think that we maybe haven't been able to deliver entirely uh, on, on that premise. Um, we're coming from uh, what we've been talking about the distro world, if you, if, uh, if you agree that this is a, a, the correct word. Uh, in that world, um, we're somewhat of a byproduct, like as I, I was presenting it like five minutes ago, uh, KDE, uh, our software, and KDE being uh, Plasma, but also all of our apps were like a byproduct of someone else's product, right? Uh, this is something that has been kind of unique in a moment in history of, of Linux and actually the software world where like there was this moment between maybe the year 95 and 2010 where it made sense to create an oper uh, operating system and try to sell it. Um, this is not the case anymore. I guess that we all somewhat agree that like software is uh, not something that you try to sell in exchange for a license that much anymore. Some people try to, uh, <laughs> even some of our partners, but uh, I also know that they struggle at doing that because, uh, well, software is, is very special that way. But in any case, there's been like all of these distributions that have been uh, well, taking what, what we create, putting it into their products, and driving it to their, their users, some, sometimes uh, collaborating with us uh, to, to improve KD. So that's not to say that it has not worked at all. It definitely has had uh, a, a very good impact in some parts of KDE, but it also has made it somewhat hard for us to innovate because we have lost that handle on uh, how our, our products end up delivered into those, those users. Um, luckily, though, like a lot of these distros, they are also like very open community, not unlike ours. So uh, there's the possibility of a lot of us to like collaborate with these distros and make sure that, that things work and this is something that has happened, it's happen, happening today, and it was happening 20 years ago. So again, <laughs> I'm not trying to pile on the, that model, just uh, trying to explain my, my mindset here. Uh, it's also somewhat complex to navigate in that uh, if you take the, the perspective uh, that our end user ends up having is quite complex to end up reaching us. So if you are a consumer of, of Debian, if you're a consumer of, of SUSE, to which extent can you, uh, can you like, walk the, the path that goes from whatever CD you got from that um, magazine into uh, well, the Dolphin maintainer who has a bug that is uh, bothering you? And in addition, to which extent are we able to deliver the fix that this person had on the CD from that magazine uh, to deliver a, a fix that is going to solve their problem? This is probably the problem of Linux in the last uh, 20 years, and maybe this is something that um, you need to think about. And actually, like this last point is what I wanted to talk about with this, which is us to think about the future. Uh, we have always this, or we, we're put in this position where we need to think not about how to serve our current users, because our current users are already in the past somehow, and we need to always be thinking like maybe six to 20 months into the future when <laughs> our users will be getting our new uh, or our stable versions of the software and the kind of thing they will be getting. And I'm, I mean, this is good because, uh, well, it gives us the, the speed and power to like be over there. But if we're always thinking about over there, we're never thinking about over here, which uh, is where reality is in, in a way. Um, I like to think that you all understood what I was trying to say here. Um, I'm going to make a small exception and say, does anybody have a question or wants to insult me in any way right now? I, I, I will take that as a no. So 
uh, if, we, if we say, okay, let's see how we move that forward or how we have been moving that forward as an industry because we as KD, we have not like invented anything super new uh, at all. Uh, we need to think about the apps. Uh, and it's actually very important that we think about the apps first because um, one of my earlier points uh, I, I was making is that these projects need to be able to extend. And when we think about extending an operating system, the obvious thing uh, to, to think about is, is the apps. The apps are these things that um, don't come from the operating system. They come from, uh, well, normally third parties. They can come from you as well, but it, uh, they are designed to, to be able to come from third parties and uh, extend the functionalities that your, your, your system is uh, already um, providing. Like, that would be, by definition, what an app is, right? Uh, and this is something that well, we, as the Linux desktop, if you wish, have been thinking about uh, for, at, at the very least, the last five years. It's, it's been a, a big push. Obviously, the, there's been efforts in the past, but they didn't really go kind of anywhere. Uh, this is something that also, uh, for example, the web Linux has been thinking about as well when they, well, designed Docker. Why was Docker designed? Well, I wasn't on that room, but I'm pretty sure that the idea was I don't want to make my company's software something part of Debian because that's not what I do. I want to be able to, like, put my software in any Linux uh, device and be able to run it uh, properly. Uh, and that's not unlike what probably the conversation happened when they decided to start working on Snap, when they decided to start working on AppImage, and when they started to work on well, Android APKs, Flatbugs, whichever. So uh, as soon as we have this, uh, this separation of um, not everything needs to be coming from the operating system, we can start thinking about creating an operating system, and we can start thinking about, uh, well, different base, uh, solution. And um, I think that uh, treating the, the apps as as end products, it's, it can be freeing. If you were uh, listening to the keynote from the KDN Life people, I think that it's uh, very interesting how like they can afford themselves to just be thinking about KDN Live and, and video and the things they care about. They don't need to be thinking about, uh, I don't know, the rest of the operating system, which is something that ends up happening, uh, especially on those cases where the line between what is operating system and what is uh, your uh, product is a bit um, blurry. But on the other hand, if we find, or if we can afford ourselves to find in a place where you can say, I know that this is my problem I want to solve and just mine, then you can start working on, well, not only the product itself, but actually explaining the product, explaining the product for different platforms as well, often uh, explaining, uh, well, trying to fundraise for the product, trying to fundraise for the product in different uh, venues, etc. And actually telling that your product is great. Like you, need, you don't need to be selling the Linux desktop all, always uh, only because you were working on a small calculator or something. You can just be saying, my app is, is useful. Um, why am I saying all of these? Well, um, this is uh, the vision statement we have right now, um, which uh, reads, I mean, it's much more explained on the, on the wiki, and I completely uh, recommend you all to be uh, reading what we say. But uh, well, the title, the slogan is A world in which everyone has control over their digital life and enjoys uh, freedom and privacy. And obviously, uh, I mean, this is great and I completely subscribe to it, but we cannot really uh, say that this can be achieved only with apps. We need to have um, uh, an understanding that is more vertical to the solutions that we provide. And actually, it's much more vertical than all of our products because, for example, we're never going to be providing. Um, I don't know, microchip, right? Like there's always going to be um, other parts of the ecosystem that, that escape us, especially if we remember that we think uh, and work on software, which is not something that we c that cannot change. Maybe KD in 50 years has a small, uh, a big factory in, in Taiwan producing um, processors. Would be surprised, but who knows? In any case, what I wanted to say is um, if we want to fulfill the full, uh, the, the, the KD vision, we need to be able to think about, about uh, the environment that we are offering to our users. And well, so far we've been doing this through, uh, through Plasma. So uh, I think that it's important then if we allow ourselves to, for Plasma to be that part of, uh, of, the, of the picture, how do, we, how do we envision Plasma? Like um, something that has kind of, uh, I want to say, bothered me in the past is that uh, we can see Plasma as the different components into our desktop, right? It can be uh, like these windows. It can be that menu over there. It can be, uh, I don't know, the server center. 
better. But um, it's very hard to, um, to marry the, going back to the vision, like controlling all of your um, digital life to, uh, by using these menus and everything. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna do that. We need to uh, be thinking about Plasma, I think, from like, the ground up. Uh, thinking about like the hardware, how the how we integrate into the hardware through the operating system to some extent, and to um, and up to the, the the UX because otherwise plasma becomes something theoretical. Uh, if you are in this uh, I don't know ideal hardware, everything will be under control. But that's well kind of the assumption, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, you can never be sure that that you're being true. What I want to say then is that it's the hardware that makes it real, and the only way to prove that is that nobody has run. Plasma in the past without hardware because that's not possible. Um, well, that's what I was talking about earlier. No, no need to go through it again. So, what I, uh, wh why am I talking about this right now? Well, first, I'm not <laughs> just talking about this right now. I have been talking about this for a while. I think that I was talking, for example, about our um, relationship with KD Slimbook back in uh, Vienna, I want to say, or maybe Albania. Uh, and it's been uh, quite on this uh, discussion. Uh, so far, uh, we had um, maybe a different approach. We had been collaborating, for example, with uh, KD Neon on, on that front. But also, like KD Neon itself, we've uh, seen it uh, maybe not be everything that we would always want to be. Uh, it has a lot of uh, legacy for good reasons. Like we ha we're standing on very strong legacy, but it doesn't uh, stop being a uh, big legacy. And like, it's uh, sitting on some legacy that is also kind of uh, expensive for us, uh, us to afford because it's not designed for us, right? Um, but right now we are in this position where we have a good number of hardware partners who claim to care about us and who collaborate with us in, in many ways. Um, and on the other hand, also ourselves, we're investing in hardware products, we've been uh, working on, for example, the PinePhone, the Pine64 with Slimbook on the on the KD Slimbook. And what we've been doing there is is saying, okay, uh, let's make what we create not theoretical anymore. Uh, let's take this piece of hardware and make it work. And I, I would say that it has worked quite well. Um, the, the, the the laptop here is one of these. Uh, it works great, uh, and uh, I can only see us uh, like being able to do better by uh, well, furthering this uh, relationship. It is still hard, though, to be flexible. So if you wanted to say today, let's make, I don't know, a tablet product, we would need to do a lot of well, non-actual plasma work to, um, to, to, to get there. And actually, that is probably maybe uh, something that we should be thinking about. Like, we should be able to say, if we care about this new platform, uh, let's try to embrace it. Uh, also, right now, uh, there's uh, new technical solutions. And what I mean by that is that uh, the Linux operating system uh, ecosystem has been evolving for the last few years, and uh, there's a lot of new solutions that we can well start looking at right now and see if they can be probably maybe to put in uh, in financial terms like cheaper to uh, use these new technologies and see uh, if we can serve our users like we want rather than taking the big complex ones from from the past. And I think that there's a good chance there. So what I want to do now is go back to the ingredients, the recipe I came up with a few mi minutes ago, and say. Uh, whether we can create something that um, that is fitting that that definition, and if I think about it uh, in terms of hardware and KDE, uh, I think that we have a very good shot. Like we can have Plasma with all its bells and whistles. Um, Plasma is already flexible enough to target a lot of the different hardware platforms that, that we have around, that we're, we're seeing. We have a lot of the flexibility to create new platforms that the world hasn't seen, if that's something that we need or want. So uh, I think that we are on a, on a good track there. Uh, making it safe and resilient is something that uh, well, for our software, we have all of the tools that are necessary, but we're also sitting on a massive platform like um, the Linux platform is, uh, as in the kernel and all of the, the middleware that we have available. We have a, a lot of partners that are making sure that everything works as it should, and obviously it's also available to all of us to, to use and extend and, and fix and improve, right? Actually, all of them fitting all of these, uh, these requirements, so I again think about uh, that, that it's something that we can do. Speaking of the third point, I think that we can agree that as KD we can collaborate on things. As KD, basically what we've been doing so far is uh, becoming good at collaborating on software projects. 
Um, actually, the earlier presentation was a good uh, example for that. Like we've had people from around the world working together on, on different projects and, um, and being excellent at it. So actually, that's kind of what we do in KD. So here a bit the question is, how do we create a product? And actually, maybe we can narrow it down a bit and say uh, somewhat simple uh, solution for an operating system that it's still easy to fix and extend. If uh, you look at the different, or if I look at the different um, solutions that are coming together, um, as soon as you start making it a bit simpler, um, thinking about the, this whole concept of read-only operating systems, thinking about, um, well, removing all of the like, dependency trees that uh, become available to the, to the user. It becomes a slightly complex to like, tweak certain parts, and we need to find the good, uh, I don't want to say compromise, even. I, I, we need to find a good solution where we can still do everything we want to do. We, we, we can still allow our users to be able to do what, what they want to do without having to have something that is far too complex for all of us to support, and actually too complex for us to uh, promise that we can deliver the experience that, that, that KD wants to, to deliver. And actually, it's not even us just doing it. Um, there's a whole hardware industry that has been uh, working and thinking about this, this problem for, for quite a while. And I think that reflecting on how they've been doing would maybe a little bit useful. So I listed here some, some um, approaches that maybe have worked to some extent or not. Uh, the first of all, uh, uh, the first I, I, I thought that could be useful to uh, think about was the Steam Deck. Um, so the Steam Deck, what they did uh, to put together an operating system, and I found it kind of interesting, was, um, and that's from my perspective, it's not what they say or, or how they explain it, well, mostly because they don't say or explain many things, but um, what I've seen is, uh, well, I've seen its binaries, they decide to uh, put them all into a big fat uh, package and they end up de delivering that. They deliver it into a read-only operating system that you can in turn make uh, not read, read only again, and when you update, what you update is this big package, everything goes away, and, and you replace it. You replace it with something that is, um, well, whatever they give you, so if you made it like non-read only, and, and you modify that, obviously everything gets lost. It's not the worst solution in, in history, it works, and actually it could uh, fix uh, a lot of the boxes that, that we need. Uh, a lot also of the, of the discussion here is where do you uh, draw the line between what is the part of the operating system and what not. And here is where like, we see that this app concept is very important. Like, as soon as you consider well, an app something that is not part of the operating system, then you can start seeing um, well, that uh, if something needs to be an app, then it, it, will be, uh, it should remain after, after these wipes or not. Um, in KDE, actually, I think that we have a little bit of a problem there. We have a lot of things that we consider apps that aren't really part of the operating system. If we start, for example, seeing at how the different um, well app uh, subsystems uh, work, we see that, that there's a lot of things that, for example, are apps in KDE. I am mainly thinking about Dolphin right now. That uh, like they couldn't possibly work properly as uh, as as an app itself because we need well to have a lot of information of our user uh, information that we probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to be giving to every app. Obviously there's ways to <laughs> um, cut corners on any security measure, but um, this is something that, that needs to be discussed. This needs to be discussed by whoever ends up designing that operating system that we might be creating. Um, something that the industry has been using for quite a while as well is, is Yocto, um, and I find, found it quite interesting. This is something that I've been uh, experiencing much more since, my, uh, since I changed employers. Um, and I find it interesting that the industry decided to put that together because <laughs> it, uh, on the first look, it doesn't look that great. I if you start uh, digging a little bit, you will see, uh, or I started seeing why they did it li like this, and there's definitely good points on that. Uh, if you saw uh, Andreas's presentation yesterday, I think that uh, he did cover a lot of that advantages, those advantages, and um, I think that there's uh, much we can learn there. I'm not sure if this is the tool we would want to use, but for example, being able to have the industry caring about certain aspects of the super lower level of our stack and allowing us to focus on what we like is something that uh, Yocto would be able to offer us and a lot of the other approaches don't. Like for example, the Steam Deck, they have the super advantage that they decided to sit on the Intel platform uh, through AMD, but still the Intel platform. Uh, and through that, they have a lot of standard that you can find that as soon as you leave that somewhat safe space, you uh, lose automatically with 
um, ARM and lately with uh, RISC-V. But on the other hand, like, there's a lot of very interesting hardware that we want probably to, to target at some point that, um, that over there, there's been people caring about those, those areas. Uh, it would be interesting to see if, for example, our uh, Plasma Mobile team would have had a better uh, life if they'd uh, been looking at this kind of tooling or not. Uh, I don't know, actually. Like, talk to them. I'm sure that they will have a more, more interesting answer than, than I have right now. Something I want also to reflect on a little bit is Android, because Android is effectively a Linux, a Linux that has been put together by one of the biggest companies in the world, and even them, they're struggling into like producing like new versions for, for the different pieces of hardware that, that they provide. Um, and actually, a lot of the problems that they see <laughs> are similar to ours, right? Like, um, how is it that um, you buy an Android phone from two years ago and you cannot update it anymore? Uh, makes you think that something uh, deeply rotten is in, in the hardware industry over there. But on the other hand, they do have like uh, the reach to uh, target tons and tons of millions of, uh, well, I don't know if it's millions of devices, but it's certainly thousands of millions of users and uh, I'm sure that there's things we can we can learn there um, my impression is that the what we can learn is more on the very lower level of the stack rather on the very top so I, I think that looking there it would be interesting then I included others here because I know that lots of the well legacy Linux distros are moving into like non or less legacy kind of uh, approaches uh, OpenSUSE has their own uh, Fedora has their own and they're all like doing a lot of the things that we want to do. I think that looking at what they're putting together and seeing how useful that would be to, well, to our intentions and our products would be interesting. Um, on the other hand, they have not been as successful as doing that as the three of these. Uh, I would say, especially because uh, I don't think that it, they're being uh, delivered to end users, which is actually what I'm talking about. I am not talking about the ability to put us uh, an operating system together, uh, because like there, there's many crazy ways of doing that. I think that the important part here is the ability to be to put together a great software solution that um, that well goes in line with how the hardware industry uh, works uh, in nowadays. Um, so if I think about what we really need is a lot of things that we already have, right? Like, for example, big inf building infrastructure, we, we do have. We have a continuous delivery, we have a CI, and we have uh, some QA systems. That's not to say that they're enough. They're clearly not enough. And actually, I can only imagine all of these exploding much more over the next few uh, months and years because well, if we want to serve users, we need to be producing things that our users are, are able to do. Uh, we've been doing a lot more of, of that for applications, for example, uh, but so far less so for um, well, hardware-specific things other than Dion, which is a good thing, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, we need support with hardware. That's also very interesting. Like You cannot be saying we want to work on know, a set of bugs but don't have a set of bugs in mind that you want to target. Uh, it can also be a bad thing because you might be doing workarounds for that set of bugs to, to be supported, but on the other hand, you will end up with a set of bugs that works that, that you can iterate and you can, you can improve and, and deliver to users eventually. If you don't have uh, something that you can provide to your users or you hope that they will have a theoretical piece of hardware, uh, I'm sure that we're going to be losing a lot of users and a lot of, of opportunities there. Um, we need to have great service solutions, which we do, and we need to have a great ec ecosystem, which we are. So I think that we can call those uh, a win already. But in any case, we're going to be having an increased workload because there's more tasks that we need to do as a community. There's more more uh, <laughs> programs that we need to execute on our CI. Uh, that we're going to be needing to do a lot more things if we go on that route. I think it's worth it, but it needs to be all of us who want to do it to, to be there. Um, something that uh, I think that is important that we think about is a clear developer story. I don't think that the developer story is something easy to tackle specifically when you think about the operating system. Uh, but uh, also, it's something that, interestingly, uh, Andreas touched on yesterday. He was talking about how you normally do it on your on your desktop and then you um you deliver it to the to the hardware. Well, we will see how, how we can do that. But I think that it's an interesting endeavor, something worth of us uh, thinking about. Um, if you're interested, uh, I would like to say come talk to me, but I don't really have a good answer for you. I would say go talk to all of the people in the community who are uh, thinking about this problem. You can talk to me if you want, and I'll tell you who you can talk to if that's uh, where you're stuck. But I think that, that it's important that we collaborate in there. And actually, like right now is the moment to be thinking about this. It's not something that we should 
should be thinking about in a couple of years, or we cannot even think like we should have been doing that like five years ago. Uh, right now, it's the moment to be thinking about this topic because um, we have the right momentum, we have the right partners, and uh, the industry, the our partners, uh, software partners are also thinking about these solutions. So I think that right now it's a good moment to be working on it and collaborating to be able to put something like that together. Now, if you have some questions, you can ask right now or somewhere around. Thank you, Alesh. Seems there are no questions, so... Good. Thank you very much for listening to me.